Hey, uh, I saw a stat the other day that uh, uh, on Kale McCarr, who is regarded as, as like a pretty good defenseman, and uh, in 40 career playoff games, he's got now 42 points, which put, put, puts him amongst the very best, but not better than the two that sit at the top, Bobby Orr and you. Yeesh. <laughs> I know what I think. I think he passed me by the end of the game because I had buddies texting me. <laughs> I don't think Al McCart could carry your jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a pretty good player, Kipper. I like watching him, man. He's fun to watch. Wow. And and well, when you watch some of these guys and you've had a chance to work and, and watch uh, Adam Fox as well, I mean, what, what do you think? Because, um, you know, they, they do remind me of you, uh, but at the t- at the same time, we're also uh, in an era where I think those guys can even look even better because of uh, the quickness and and the less feel that, I don't know, maybe that a 225-pound guy is going to run him out of the building. I mean, does that all come into play here? Yeah, but you can, you know, I heard guys that were played, you know, 20 years before I came into the league and they talked about how different the game was and, It's no different now than when we played, Um, but you can, the biggest thing I like about Makar and Fox and a lot of these young guys is the way they see the game. You know, you can't, Mm -hmm. it's no different than the way I saw the game and, you know, the the plays they make, the time they buy, the setups they, they give their teammates. So all that's very similar. Of course, you'll never replicate you know, the time and the way that the rules were or lack of rules and what was going on, the type of game then, but it's, it's, it's entertaining. I think you got to agree. It's an entertaining game for certainly the playoffs still. Uh, I think regular season, sometimes there's some games where you, you wish for a little more body contact and a little more, a little more emotion, but these playoffs have been great and it's the best time of year. These first, couple rounds because we got hockey every night. So these these young guys, they see the game the same way I did, the same way guys before me saw it. They just have a little bit uh, more freedom for their skills to be uh, highlighted on a daily basis. Yeah, um, you know, that that Fox just has unbelievable vision. I I totally understand what you're talking about there. Um, You know, one thing I I would love to get your opinion on here is this Toronto Maple Leafs team – you know, I, th- I think for the first time they felt like they were going to move on for real and the fans were excited and you heard the crowd here sound not like a corporate Bay Street crowd, but like a real raucous, excited hockey crowd. You were on the last team to win a game seven here in Toronto. Tell us a little bit about that experience and the crowd and what it's like when you actually get over the hump in Toronto. Yeah, it was you know, obviously I, I've talked about my disappointment and the way the trade went down and everything, but right from my first day there and my first uh, game and my first day in the locker room and seeing my number two, um, you know, with my name on the back of the white Leafs jersey, um, I was amazed at, at what a great experience it was, um, how nice everybody was and how happy I was to actually get that experience and the playoffs you know I was overwhelmed when I I I like to stay around the rink um, for a while afterwards and you may get a workout in or your ice in or something but I didn't have really anything to get back to and I hung out the rink after our uh, game seven win over Ottawa and when I came out to go back to my condo that I was renting um, there were still cars, you know, stacked up bumper to bumper with leaf flags out circling, you know, there, then it was the air Canada center. Mm-hmm. And I just kept, th- I kept thinking to myself, man, if I could win one in New York after 54 years and back this up now in Toronto, <laughs> I said, it's, it's not going to get any better than that. I should, I should shut it down, but it was, It was such a great experience and, you know, I, I was treated so well, you know, I think it's obviously harder for the guys that are there year after year after year because the pressure mounts, but I was coming in to try and, you know, get us all get Toronto over the hump and, you know, add to the playoffs. And 
So I was treated so well. People wanted me to like it there. They wanted me to play well. And, um, you know, I was disappointed in what happened in the second round and still sticks with me today because it was my last playoff game and I was on the ice for Roenick's goal and still it still bums me out today to think about it. But uh, the whole experience was was amazing. Yeah, we were talking to Brian Leach, Hall of Famer, and uh, just mentioned uh, on the Leaf hockey club that uh, last advanced to the second round. Brian, um, you're, you're lucky if you get to play on one original six team. You got, uh, as well as uh, New York, of course, Toronto and Boston. Uh, when you think about all three of them, are there more things that are the similarities or is there a few things different in, uh, here in Toronto opposed to the two U.S. teams? I would say Toronto and New York. Um, almost identical in everything they do um, within the arena for the players, the way, um, you know, the trainers work and where everybody works. And I would say Boston was just going through that as part of that transition where they, after I played my one year there, I think they just kept um, going to where they are now. I think from the guys that I know that live right Around me, I live in uh, downtown Boston now, and I have a bunch of the players that live around me currently and uh, that I've gotten to know a little bit. And they're very happy with the way the organizations run now and, um, you know, the way they're treated. And they've a new, new practice arena for a while now. And, um, you know, the, the wives and girlfriends are treated so good, and they've got top-notch training and everything. So, um, but Toronto was just seamless the way you walked in and people were looking to help you. The trainers, you know, made sure they knew exactly how you wanted your skates. Everything was set up for you. It was just uh, seamless going from one first class organization to another. Brian, one, one of the questions in Toronto <clears throat> has been about getting over the hump with this group and trying to trying to win a Stanley Cup and looking for leadership in that. You know, they've brought in a lot of older veteran guys, Wayne Simmons, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, Jason Spezza, Mark Giordano, all those guys they just named, um, none of them have won a Stanley Cup. How important do you think it is in having been there before to understand, to share with the group, hey, this is what it really takes? Or do you think it's just a matter of a well-built team will find a way? Yeah, I think sometimes um, the previous winning can be uh, overblown, but there's definitely something to be said from moving on from, you know, the first round of the second, the second to third, the injuries that happen to your teammates, you know, the, the things that are going on behind the scenes with guys, you know, having to take you know, pain injections or whatever, and just how you deal with your teammates and, how you go through, I think the experience does help there, but I also think that hunger, you know, an older player that hungers for playing in a, in a market that's like Toronto and that wants to win a Stanley Cup and would love to be part of that group, I think there's a lot to be said for that too. So it's, you know, you need from the back end that goaltending right through um, the 25 guys that you probably need all the way through and you see the playoffs now, you know, the Leafs had two chances there and lost an overtime game and lost a one goal game in game seven. So the, the margin of error is so small and, you know, you, you, each year is different. So you can't really group any of the recent Leafs, you know, lack of moving on into one thing, but they've got good people running that team and that organization. And, you know, they're trying as hard as anyone else to, pieces together and they want to win as much as the players do so i think there's something to be said for the experience of older players and the hunger to to win and to win and you know embrace coming to toronto